Hello, hello, hello. I'm going to let a few people show up, hopefully. <clears throat> it's been a while. Sorry, I have not been on here, but I'm excited to chat today. Should have some people rolling in here in a second. All right, so go ahead and get started. Give you guys a little breakdown of what I've been doing. Um, this is a Better at Beach podcast. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, we've been quite busy these last couple of weeks, and uh, sorry the the uh, podcast has kind of taken a little step away just because we had some other things that we were focusing on. Um, we had our last camp for the spring in St. Pete Beach. Uh, it's getting a little too warm there for us to run clinics. Um, but man, it went amazing. Um, I'm sure Mark spoke on it last week, but I absolutely love these camps. Um, every single time that I'm there, I am introduced to new people. I am able to see how how athletes interact with one another. We get to bring on a super team of coaches. Um, we are always blessed to have amazing coaches, but this this past week, it was our biggest coaching staff that we've had. Um, and it, it really got us to be a family super, super quick. Not only the coaches, but also the athletes as well. Um, if you have not joined us for one of our week long camps and you are thinking about it, I can almost promise you that you will not regret it. You will absolutely love it. Um, they are amazing. It's, it's unreal. The connections that you can make, not only with us, but with other people around the country. Um, it creates friendships that last a long time and I am always happy to be a part of it. Um, then after camp. We went over to Panama City Beach, where we had the qualifier for AVP Austin. Uh, I'll fill you guys in a little bit on that and what's going on on my side. I know Mark talked a lot about the tournament, so I'm not going to go into that too much. But um, I played with the amazing Kyle Friend. Um, I'll talk a little bit about him uh, a little bit later on. Um, but we had a very strong tournament. We ended up coming out coming out with a fifth. And unfortunately, just missed um, the bid to get into AVP Austin. Um, there's still a small chance that like, if, if teams happen to have to drop out for some reason, then Kyle and I are actually the next team up. Um, but uh, some things would have to kind of go our way, and, and so we're not, we're not holding our breath. But we're ready to compete if we need to. Um, today... I wanted to get back on here and talk about goal setting. Um, I at camp, we had a lot of people that came up, came up, and they talked about how they enjoyed the the podcast that I did in the winter. That was about goal setting, and it was kind of crazy. I the technology wasn't working too well, and um, I was supposed to show an interview that we did with Carrie Potters, uh, who's an Australian Olympian. Um, and it ended up me just, just being me talking about the interview for a long time. And so I just wanted to circle back and talk to you guys a little bit about my goal setting and how I went about it and how it's going. Um, there's some pretty things that go with it. There's some ugly things that go with it. Um, but just a, a quick, a quick little rundown of whenever you are thinking about setting goals for yourself. Um, and I talked about this a lot in the previous uh, podcast, but um, I just want to kind of talk about it again. Goals are something that we have to do. You know, we have to start writing down our goals. And, and I, I mean it when I say write them down, write them down on a, a post-it note, stick it to your mirror, write it down in your journal, whatever you need to do so that you can come back and look at this and see how close you're getting to your goals. Um, personally, my goals were very volleyball related. Um, it had to do with qualifying for an AVP. It had to do with possibly winning some tournaments. Um, 
but mostly it, it had to deal with me getting my confidence back and getting back out onto the sand. Um, but whenever we're thinking about writing down these goals and creating your own goals, there needs to be tiers. Okay. You can't just start off by saying, I want to win a tournament. Okay. You have to think about how you're going to get there as well. And so when whenever, whenever we're thinking about tiered goals and we're thinking about how we plan on a, a, accomplishing them, I think it's okay to start with the larger goals and work our way backwards because those small goals are going to help us obtain those larger goals. And so if you haven't already done this, maybe come up with some goals of where you want to see yourself in three to five years. You know, I, I don't I don't know what that looks like for you. That's something that you're going to have to dive in personally. Um, and then once you do that, then you can start working back into what do you hope to accomplish this year? Once you figure that out, then you can kind of figure out how you plan on getting there. Um, and I think that this is the portion where a lot of people don't put a lot of emphasis is because these I, I I was doing a, a little seminar on how how you can better yourself and everything like that. And one of the things that I, I really liked is he he made me this the guy that I was working with, his name's Gerald. Um, but he he made me start by writing down my goal. And then he said, okay, what are you gonna do this week to get you on the right track? Um and Fortunately for me, when I was creating my when I was creating my goals for this off season, I started on January first. Um, I had a buddy that kind of helped me along the way, and he he told me about this challenge seventy five hard. I've talked about this in the past. Uh, seventy five hard is a personal development challenge. Uh, seventy five days, no drinking, no no junk food, no. Um, you have to follow a specific diet. You have to work out two times a day for 45 minutes. One of them has to be outside. You have to read 10 pages. You have to drink a gallon of water. I think that's it. Um, so with me, my daily goals were kind of established for me. Um, some people aren't doing the chat. You're not doing a challenge right now. So you might have to create those daily goals on your own. But those daily goals should be something that if you are completing them on a daily basis, that eventually they are going to lead you to a point of success of accomplishing your longer goals. Maybe it's a month goal of um, getting a certain rating in a tournament. Maybe it's playing in a playing in a tournament in general. Um, I know that that was one of my goals for this off season was to play in a tournament before the end of April, and I made that happen. Um, but these daily goals are extremely important. And the main reason is that it sets up discipline. You know, goals are easy to let go of if you don't have something that you're doing daily to get you closer to them. So with me going with 75 hard, it made it a little bit easier for me to know where I was going because all the tasks that I had to complete within a day and that didn't include my volleyball training. That didn't include my work for Better at Beach. Um, everything was on top of that. So I knew that by completing these daily goals, I was kind of setting myself up for success anyway, because I know that I'm doing something that's going to better myself. And as long as I'm bettering myself, then I'm going to be getting closer to those goals. Um, so that's my first challenge for you guys is come up with a list of tasks. Don't start with 10 or 20, okay? Start with something that you think is attainable and then you can always add to it. Um, you know, for me, after the 75 hard has kind of finished and I'm still using a decent amount of them, I'm still drinking a gallon of water, I'm still reading 10 pages a day, I'm still doing my workouts. Um, they look a little different. I'm concentrating a little bit more on my body and listening to my body. So some days I'm not doing two 45 minute workouts. I'm just doing one. Um, but I've set up daily goals for myself. Um, and one of them is very simple. I start off, I start off my day with gratitude. You know, I try to list three things that I'm grateful for in my life. 
Um, and it's crazy just doing that, how it sets my day up for success. Um, if you don't already practice that, try to do it. Uh, I guarantee you that it'll make you realize that you're a lot better off than you may, be, may think you are. Um, the next thing that I want you to think about after you've created that kind of task list that you want to do for a daily basis is who's going to help you. All right. If you want to win volleyball tournaments or if you want to perform better in your volleyball leagues or your classes or just in your with your friends in the backyard, do you need a trainer? Do you need and not only a, a volleyball trainer, do you need a fitness coach? You know, so that was one of the things that I did when I got back home. I'm very lucky that I have Mark um, who pushes me to be better. He has a workout program that we work with. And um, but when Mark's out of town, I have another trainer that I go to. Uh, his name's Ryan. He works at a shift South Bay um, and he's a phenomenal trainer that I go to and the reason I go to him is because he holds me accountable. He makes sure that I'm in there uh, having some guidance from somebody and to make sure that I'm getting closer to my goals takes a little bit of the pressure off of me. Um, I personally am not the kind of person that can just keep working out by myself for a whole year and get closer to my goals. If you are one of those people, then that's phenomenal. I, I, I give you a round of applause. Um, but for me, Finding a trainer was really important. Um, maybe some of you need help with your nutrition. You know, don't don't try to do this by yourself. It's okay to ask for help. Um, if you really care about your goals, then you need to set yourself up with a team that's going to help you get to those goals as well. So it's okay to realize and take a step back and say, you know what? I'm going to look and try to find as many people that will help me become the best version of myself. Um, I think a lot of times people try to do this on themselves, by themselves, and that can lead to a lot of failures. So surround yourself with a team. And then the next thing is, what can you do this week to get you going towards it? You know, I think those task lists, I think reaching out to your team is important. Um, but most of the time, it's just getting started. You know, we try to set off our days and we, we're like, oh, I want to start on a Monday. And even though today is a Monday, if you're listening to this, today's a great day to start. Um, but you don't need to delay, right? Pick it up. What can you do today that's going to help you get closer to your goals tomorrow? All right. Um, there's a reason that you have this, this idea, this thought that you should create goals and that you want something more. Um, and the more that we tend to push that off, the more that we start to question ourselves and, and we're obviously not getting closer to those goals either. So what can you do today that's going to help you get going? Um, once again, because I did 75 hard, a lot of my goals were laid out for me. It was a personal challenge to myself. Um, and fortunately I succeeded, um, during the process of my, of my challenge where I went with that 75 hard. Um, there were a lot of days where I wanted to give up, but I had a group, a support system that was in place that allowed me to have outlets and people holding me accountable. So the drinking part, um, I, I'm not, I don't need to drink, but I enjoy a beverage from time to time. I think a lot of us do, especially in the beach volleyball community, but um, Mark was going sober as well. Uh, my buddy, Chad, who is also a part of the company now it was going sober. So like knowing that I had these people in my corner really, really helped me. So if you're one of those people that needs help, it's okay to ask somebody else and be like, Hey, do you want to really try to chase this? Especially if you have a partner that's in the area, you know, Mark and I don't play in tournaments together, but we both care about each other's success. So when we can team up on, on similar goals and kind of tackle them together, that helps us out a lot. Um, throughout the process of the 75 hard, I just want to share with you guys. Um, I usually don't like talking about myself on podcasts, but today I, I kind of want to take a second and acknowledge and kind of celebrate myself because I, I was able to complete it during the process. I ended up losing around 18 pounds. Um, I didn't realize that I had 18 pounds that I needed to lose. Um, but 
after I've done it, I know what I feel like when I'm healthy. I know what I feel like when I'm strong. And fortunately for me, I was able to see results very quickly. But um, that doesn't always happen. You know, I, I think uh, I've gone in the past. So uh, at the at the top, the title of this podcast is how it's going and what struggles can come with it. Um, and one of the struggles that I think comes with goals is one. There's two avenues that we can go with this. The first one is that you succeed but you still feel like you you have more to prove, okay? And what I mean by that is uh, whenever I'm, I'm thinking about myself right now is we, Kyle and I had a phenomenal tournament, tournament in Panama City. It was one of the best displays of volleyball that I've shown in years. I, I played at a level that I knew I could, could do, but I hadn't done it in a long time. Um, and even with a finish of a fifth place, like when I look at it on paper, I'm super ecstatic. I love that we performed this well as a team. I know the teams that we beat, um, which were phenomenal teams, uh, but we had a game plan and we were able to accomplish some very big victories. Um, but still at the end of the day, when we had that loss, it hurt. You know, it was tough. It, it it made me question some things for a little, for a split second of like, man, like if, if you had done anything else different, would you have gotten third? Would you have made it to the final? Um, and I think that that's, that's a, that's a troubling place to be because a lot of the times whenever we have goals and when, whenever we have ideas in our mind of what we want to accomplish, anything less than that, can make you feel like you failed. Um, and I, I think I'm talking to myself right now, but I think I, hopefully by talking about myself, you guys can find some common themes of maybe something you've done in the past. Um, but once I was able to take a deep breath and look at the whole weekend and see where I was and, and where I finished, it, it made me extremely grateful. And it, it made me realize that when you are disciplined and and you put your mind to something that you can accomplish very, very large goals. Um, it, there is that avenue where if you let your mind go into a negative space of, oh, you did okay, but you still didn't accomplish your goal um, because the goal was to qualify for Austin um, and we just missed out on it. So, but at the end of the day, I could not be prouder of myself. I could not be prouder of Kyle. Um, and kind of going back and, and talking about setting up a support system, I could not have asked for a better, better partner on the court than Kyle because he did exactly what I needed him to do. He played phenomenal like he always does, but it wasn't that that made us get to where we were. It, it, it was our common idea of understanding who we were as a team the positive energy that we put into our play. And because of that, we were able to succeed. So I found a partner that was willing to help me along my journey and I, I was able to help him as well. So um, that's always really cool. The second avenue that can happen is, and I'm sure at some point this season it will happen to me, I think it's inevitable, but you completely fail. You know, uh, so I know there's been tournaments that I show up to and I'm hoping to qualify and then I lose in the first round of the qualifier. Um, and I think it's important to remember that there's a reason that you have short term, medium and long term goals. Uh, success doesn't happen overnight, but does that doesn't mean that you should give up on them? You know, uh, if anything, it means that you should double down. It means that you should really give it a shot and keep going, keep pushing so that the next opportunity that presents itself, you're still ready. You know, and I think a lot of that has to do with discipline and putting yourself into an area where you realize that they're finding these little victories, you know, so that's why I really, really like the daily, the daily task list, the daily goals, the weekly goals. Um, 
did you get better at a certain skill? You know, did you, did you show up to everything that you promised yourself that you're going to show up to? You know, for me, it's going to the gym five days a week. It's getting out and practicing three to four days a week. And if I turn down a, a gym day or if I um, turn down a practice session just because I don't feel like doing it, then that's a discipline issue. That's something that I need to look at deeper in myself and, and also ask the question, where am I also not showing up in my life? Um, so I think we owe it to ourselves. Even if you face failure, um, it's okay to just recognize that that's what it feels like. And you need to just get back on the horse and keep grinding, keep going towards what you're trying to accomplish. Um, and if you have those daily tasks, that's a great place to start. Start with the next day saying, hey, my goal for today is to make sure that I check off all the things on my list. And I think as long as we understand what the mission is and what we're trying to accomplish, then that's how that's that's where we start to reap the benefits of goals and goal setting. Um, and it, it's it doesn't happen overnight. You know, this is I'm having this conversation with you guys and we're in the middle of april and i started my goals in january and i'm still i'm getting closer to accomplishing them i'm getting closer to my body and my mind feeling like i'm ready to accomplish those goals but i might not accomplish my goals until the end of the summer or possibly even next year um, but I know that as long as I keep pushing and I keep working towards them, that it's going to help me. And as long as I have these little goals and task lists and checklists that I'm, a con that I'm checking off daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly, um, then I know that I'll keep getting closer to those goals. But you have to establish and you have to write those, those goals down because if you don't, then you're kind of just blindly working. And if you don't have an idea of where you're going, that, that's got to be your first step is get a clear idea of what you want to accomplish. Then that'll allow you to understand with what you need to do on a weekly, monthly basis to get closer to that. It'll allow you to think about what team you need to surround yourself to help you get going in that area. And if you're thinking that you can do it by yourself, I hate to say it, but you got a hard, a hard, task presented in front of you. Um, and I just suggest avoiding it altogether. You know, I, I think that asking for help is one of the biggest things that you can do. And whether that's with us, with Better at Beach, or your friends, your support system that you live in, that, that is in your hometown, wherever that might be. Um, but you have to establish those ideas. Um, and that might be the hardest part about goal setting. Because once you have the stuff written down on paper, it's real easy to check a box. It's just a matter of time of you getting out of your house or setting time aside for, during your day to make sure that you can do it. Um, but getting those goals established is, is definitely important. Um, so for me, the rest of the summer, I, I've kind of, I have the same plan. I haven't changed anything. I haven't accomplished anything other than having a good finish in Panama City. Um, I have a couple more tournaments coming up. Um, but my individual goals haven't changed. I, I will say that it, it is important to figure out how you can also manipulate your goals a little bit. They don't have to be finite. They don't have to be set in stone and not changed. You know, so for me... Um, some of my skill focuses throughout the next couple of weeks have changed dramatically. Um, my physicalness has changed. So now my goals in the gym have changed a little bit. Um, also my schedule is just extremely, extremely tough. So working around my schedule and figuring out how these goals kind of push into those, uh, into that schedule and something that's possible because, um, with tournaments, clinics, camps that we have coming up this summer, um, it's, it's, it's something to look at and it's something we all have reasons that we can't do some things. So it's, it's important to make sure that you look at that and you take that into account as well. So for instance, I'm flying out of town on Wednesday to go play in a tournament in Hawaii, which I'm extremely excited for a little vacation, but I know that 
my training schedule and my, my gym schedule is going to be a little different, but I'm not going to beat myself up over that. You know, I'm just looking at my weeks and I'm saying, okay, this is what you're going to be able to accomplish this week. But I took a look at that yesterday and I realized what I need to accomplish before I leave while I'm there in order to keep moving towards these long-term goals. Um, and then, so I think for, for right now, I wanted to keep this episode under 30 minutes. Um, I I've spoken about goal setting, but I think for some of the people that were tuning in, um, last time they said that they had a couple questions about what that should look like, how they should do it. And so if you guys have any questions, um, I'm going to kind of open up this to a live chat pretty early today. Um, but I just want to talk to you guys for a second. So if you have any questions or if you have any success stories that you want to write in the chat, please go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to stick around for about five minutes and just talk about that. But um, I just wanted to get back on here and kind of reiterate the idea of how you can set up your goals. What are some some pain points that you can think that are coming um, and some ways to avoid that. And so just in brief, while I'm waiting on some questions, a little recap for those of you guys that showed up late. Um, whenever you're creating your goals, you have to make sure that it is on a tiered schedule. Okay. Don't just write down your one goal that you want to accomplish this year. Start with that goal that you want to accomplish and then break it down into a quarterly goal, a monthly goal. A weekly goal and then the thing that i said i focused on a lot which held me accountable and got me disciplined was creating these daily task lists um for me it's as simple as three things you're grateful for when you wake up breath work in the morning read 10 pages during the day drink a gallon of water get some form of activity in okay and so those are my five i don't like to go much higher than that because I want to set myself up for success. There's a reason that I made these goals that I think that there's something that I can accomplish um, while also moving me in the right direction. Okay. Um, once you have those goals written down, it's important to find a support system. Who's going to keep you accountable? My support system is very easy. It's built within my company or our company with Mark and I. So Mark and I keep ourselves accountable. You know, we have to show up every single day and figure out what we're doing. We have to sit down and say, okay, this is when we're going to work on the business. This is when we're going to work on our volleyball. And as long as we're doing that at the right time, then we're going to be moving towards it. We also had similar goals. So Mark wasn't drinking during the 75 days that I wasn't drinking. So we could lean on each other a little bit for that. I also talked about the fact how I have a trainer, I have a nutritionist, I have people that I'm reaching out to. And yes, it costs a little bit of extra money, but it's something that I wanted to put towards because I knew that they were going to help me get closer to my goals. And it's just, it's something to think about because a lot of times if we don't look for help, then we kind of hold ourselves back a little bit and we're, we're definitely going to get there a little bit slower. You, you're still going to get there. You're probably going to come in, come up with a few more pain points and and a few more struggles. But it, it, if you have the team, whether it's a partner, whether it's a coach, um, it's just important to make sure that you set, set yourself up with a team. All right. We got our first question. So any tips managing multiple goals like gameplay versus the gym? Um, so fear the meta. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if that's a the meta universe, but I'm a little scared myself. Um, but so I don't I don't know if we necessarily need to um, think of those whenever we're thinking about our goals, try to make them linear, you know, so like when I see gameplay versus the gym, like for me, those are very similar goals. All it is is a matter of setting up your schedule. That's the biggest thing with that is time management. You know, a lot of us, we have full-time jobs. We have, um, we have things that come up that are on our schedule. If you have kids, if, you have, if you're still in school, um, if you have leagues, if you have uh, two, multiple jobs, 
Um, it's just a matter of looking at your schedule on a weekly basis and figuring out ahead of time, when are you going to do it? So I think the first thing when I see that uh, for the person who is fear the meta, managing multiple goals like gameplay versus the gym, that just sounds like time. And so you first need to figure out how many time, how many days a week do you plan on playing? How many days a week do you plan on working out? And whenever you find that idea, then it's important on Sunday afternoon when you're on your couch watching TV or if you're out hanging out with friends, just pull up your calendar and create a soft schedule of what you have going on that week. And then be strict on when you plan on doing your goals. You know, I think a lot of us, especially our society, has made it very apparent that you should be living a certain way. And a lot of that has to do with work. You went to college to get this degree. You got this job. Now this is what you should be focusing on. But I think you need to figure out what's important to you growing. You know, I, I'm not saying that you should push aside your goals or anything like that or your work or anything like that. But setting up time aside for yourselves so that you can work on yourself is also important. So I, I think when we're looking at that, think about maybe training three days a week, getting in the gym three days a week. If you don't think that's possible, start smaller. But write down the time that you plan on going and then hold yourself accountable to make sure that you can show up when you need to show up. And then show up. That's it. All right. Mark Zen. Love it when you show up, man. You got some great insight and your your girls are lucky to have you as a coach. We set a goal of small, sorry. We set a goal of small tournaments in all four complex skills, serving, passing, setting, and hitting for all four all our players when they're in season getting ready for playoffs. We focus on the process and the simple plan week to week. Everyone can say I need to improve and everything. But yeah, I love that. I, I think set especially if you're a coach. Setting up a system where your players understand what they're supposed to be working on is definitely going to help. You know, I, I think this idea of showing up into practice and saying that we're going to get better at volleyball, that that's a tough thing to do. But with Mark, it seems like you're you're doing a really good job of kind of checking off this this weekly task for a lot of these girls or kids that you're working with. Um, and as long as you can kind of instill that work ethic and that hobby, or sorry, not hobby, but if you can inst instill that work ethic, then that's where people are going to start to feel like they're getting better at something. And if you work on passing for a whole week, at the end of the week, you're going to say that you got better at that skill. So uh, doing that on a weekly basis, having the, the mantras of little by little, day by day, those little sayings um, makes people realize that it's not something that has to happen fast. So I, I appreciate that. I think uh, I wish I had a coach like you when I was growing up. Um, I wouldn't have spent my 20s and 30s trying to figure out how to play this sport, but I appreciate you. How do you stay motivated? So Zachary Miller, how do you stay motivated for sticking with your five daily goals? Uh, Zachary, I think something for me, was writing them down on a calendar uh, and then actually going off and checking off what my daily goals were. So I, I think whenever we don't have something to actually check off, so for me, it was something I physically needed to do. When I was done with my 10 pages of reading, I went over to my calendar and I checked it off. Um, and then it's just a matter of realizing that it's important. You know, you have to, I don't think a lot of us put importance into ourselves again, going back to that conversation. Um, but if you realize that it's something that you're gonna, that you're using to help you become a better person, a stronger athlete, a better husband, friend, whatever it is, then you'll make time for it. Uh, there were a lot of days where it, especially when I was doing 75 hard, where I, it was 9.30 at night and I still hadn't finished my gallon of water and I still hadn't done my reading. Um, but when I would look at my checklist, I would be like, come on, like you can do this. And I think just having that physical uh, checklist that I had on my calendar really helped me out. 
Um, so hopefully you can give that a shot and it doesn't have to be a calendar. It can just be a whiteboard or something like that. But um, I think having something there and just realizing that you need to get it done is important. Uh, Darren Soldner, you are a clown. That's not nice, but hope you're having a good day. Uh, what is the best way to keep yourself accountable? What works the best for you? Uh, so Masha, that's a really good question. Um, once again, that physical checklist was really important with me. And then having accountability partners. Uh, I talked about Mark. I talked about Chad. Those were my people that I was accountable with. Um, and it didn't happen necessarily on a daily basis, but maybe a week if I hadn't heard from Chad or if I hadn't heard from Mark, I would just send him a quick little text. Hey, how's it going? Um, with We had a big, a big Instagram group that Chad created with 75 hard and people were sharing success stories on there. That was, that was something that really motivated me because I saw that other people were going through the same thing I was and seeing their success made me realize that I could keep going and that I would see success too. Um, good, chasing goals is always difficult because there are always going to be these peaks and valleys and plateaus, you know, and the plateaus are the ones that are really hard to kind of work with because maybe you're not seeing the quick weight loss or you're not feeling like you're, you're getting better at the sport, but um, having that outside motivation with a group and accountability partners, uh, that's something that kind of keeps you pushing through that. And I promise they, they come. So it's just a matter of sticking with it. But I think having that physical checklist that you are completing stuff that you set out to do, and then setting yourself up with some buddies that are willing to go on that journey with you. I think is really important. Okay. Mark, another question. What would you tell high school players who have the mentality of wanting improvements quickly? Most of my coaching is to help them pace expectations and give specific feedback that can result in clear improvement, clear to the player as well as myself, and teach them that their improvement will be more of an ebb and flow. Yeah, I think... Um, it's a tough question. And whenever I, so when I read this question, it takes me back to when I was a teacher myself and it's just reminding them that it takes time, you know, it, especially whenever we're learning something new. Um, and that's what a coach's job is, is that they see something that a player isn't doing and they introduce something new into their lives so that they can hopefully become a better player. Um, and just making them realize that some days it's gonna feel like you got worse, you know? And, and I think as long as they realize that they're, they showed up, that they put in the work and that they are working towards a goal with a team that they have trust in, then it, it allows everybody to realize that it is a part of a journey. You know, and that's exactly whenever we're talking about goal setting is the reason that we do it is because we want to be on this journey. We want to challenge ourselves to be uncomfortable for a little bit because we know that at the end of the at the end of the road, hopefully we're able to ring the victory bell and say, I did it. Um, but if you don't have those uncomfortable days, if you don't have those days that feel like you failed, then you're never really going to have that extremely victorious feeling either. Um, so I, I, Mark, I, I have no doubt that you're um, probably doing a very good job, but I think, I think it's, I think it's more just about getting them to understand that it's not about the daily result. You know, that, that's one of the hardest things that we deal with as coaches is that somebody will come for a private lesson and they expect to walk away being a better hitter or being a better setter. Um, but it takes time, you know, there, there are things that you have to learn and then you have to learn how to perform them and then you have to learn how to perform them correctly. And so it's just a matter of taking the time, making them realize that it's not going to be something that happens overnight. It's going to be something that they have to work through. And there's a reason that they're called goals. You know, it's not just a timeline of saying, oh, you're going to get, you're going to be good at this at this time. Um, you got to stay disciplined. You got to kind of keep chasing it. But um, I think 
making sure that your athletes have trust in you is huge because once they trust you, then they'll see the same vision that you do. And if, even if they can't see it, they'll trust you to, that they're going to get there. So I think that's really, that's a really, really good question. And I think a lot of coaches need to think about that because, um, we, we can be tough on ourselves. We can be tough on our athletes, but as long as we have this idea that we're, we're in it together and trying to get them to go towards that area, I think, I think that's the answer. Okay. Any more questions? I think I've got about one more minute before I got to run to practice myself. Okay. Um, but so thanks for uh, coming on, guys. Sorry uh, if this episode was a little bit too much about me. Um, but to be honest, I, I've been happy with where I've been going. Um, goal setting is, has been huge for me. Um, it's been something that set me up for hopefully a decent amount of success this summer. Um, I plan on continuing with my goal setting and moving in the direction that I think is best for me. Um, if you guys have any questions about how you can start goal setting, and this isn't something that I often do, but for those of you that are tuning in, shoot me an email, brandon at better at I will gladly shoot some messages back and forth with you with some ideas on what you can do. I can share what, what has worked for me. Um, absolutely no cost, no connection. You don't have to pay for anything. Um, but I would just like to kind of share the experience that I've had. And if I can help anybody get, get on that path, then I will. Um, so I appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, if you aren't following us on Spotify or Google, wherever the podcasts are, uh, then make sure you do that. You can go back and check out the, the goal setting portion that I did with care or that I talked about what Carrie had performed and that gave me a lot of insight on how to create my goals. So if today's session was as clean or clear on what you can be doing to make sure that you're kind of progressing and chasing your goals, then make sure you go back and listen to that episode. Um, I think I do a little bit better job of kind of talking about everything that's going on, but today I just wanted to talk about how uh, I'm happy with the results that I've gotten, um, the troubles that I've found myself in currently and how I'm getting out of them. Um, and just to be honest, wanted to celebrate a little bit. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. I appreciate the questions as always. Um, and if there's nothing else, we'll see you guys next week and we'll see you on the sand. Appreciate y'all.